All right, it is morning and I am leaving the uh, outflow campground. If you're gonna camp here, you actually have to make reservations. It's $14 for the hiker biker campsite. So um, you gotta, you gotta make uh, reservations there. Um, you can do it online, it's actually pretty easy. And, uh, but you can't do it in person, I don't think, most times. There might be somebody there sometimes, but uh, if you come in in the afternoon or whatever, probably not a person at the info booth. There's usually somebody there who can help you, but uh, yeah, you just need to make your reservations at the online. It's easier. Uh, I'm trying to remember, just look up uh, the Yakagani uh, Outflow Campground. You'll find it. It's actually an RV park and tent camping and pretty much everything in between. So, anyway, coming out of the park, come up here. We're going to cross over the bridge and uh, the trail picks up on the other side. But uh, yeah, just a nice, uh, nice foggy morning as they have all been so far. Um, this is probably my last good day to ride without weather. Expecting some, some rain coming through on Sunday. I think today's Saturday. It's kind of nice to lose track of which day it is. But uh, anyway, uh, once you come over the bridge here, you pick up the trail here to the right. It just uh, pushes straight through. And the next town from here is Rockwood. It is 19 miles. Myersdale is 31 and that's our target for today. A nice easy day. So basically I'm on the trail. It splits off to the right. And then I think it just uh, takes off down to the right to follow the uh, the river. Um, the town is actually back to the left there. Um, I didn't go into town just because it was it was a little late. I'd already got my camp set up and I'd already had dinner, so I didn't really have a need to go into town. But anyway, here we are. We're back on trail and. We're going to push on through to Myersdale. So it looks like uh, shortly after you get on trail, you hit a uh, another viaduct bridge, basically. And this is taking me back across the Yakagani. So you kind of cross it in one place and come back across it in another. I think I cross it down to the left, come up and cross it a little further upstream here. And this is a super shallow section of river. So I just see people fishing. I guess there's trout fishing in this area. So if trout fishing is your thing, you might want to bring a pole with you. All right, back across that nice little viaduct there. And back into the nice tunnel of leaves here. It's a shame, I think I'm missing the pretty colors by about two weeks or so. Um, I imagine this place would be just brilliant yellow and red and orange once the leaves change, but uh, that's okay, it's still pretty. No doubt about it. Bridge, viaduct, whatever you wanna call them. Hit it back across the river again. But wow, really pretty views here. I'm gonna take a take a little stop and just point the camera upstream for you. Actually, that would be downstream. But that's what it looks like this morning. Pretty nice. And then coming back this way, and walk it over here. You can see there's there's downstream. Where's that upstream? 
I can't tell. I guess that's upstream right there. Up this way so you can see me. There you go. It might be a little too close, but it is what it is. So I just took one of my five mile uh, water breaks and did a little bike maintenance. Um, I, I noticed that it felt like it was rolling a little slow and uh, I got my air pressure gauge out and checked my tires. I run tubeless tires. So, <coughs> excuse me, the front tire wasn't too bad. It was around 18 PSI. The back tire was only at eight PSI. So it was cushy, but it was not very efficient in rolling. So I got them both up to about 25 PSI. And uh, I've got pretty fast rolling tires. They're not like road tires, but they've got a pretty, pretty good shred for, for hard pack. And so I figured, you know, they don't do as well if you don't run them with some good pressure in them. So if I was running in mud, I would probably lower that pressure. But on hard pack, that higher pressure, I can already feel the difference. And since I was already doing a little maintenance, I pulled out the oil and uh, lubed, the, uh, lubed the chain up really well. And uh, because there's a lot of grit and grime on these particular trails, um, early on they were really, that gravel was kind of dusty and such, and I hadn't oiled yet. So I figured that was as good a time as any. So now I've got good pressure. I've got an oil chain. And the bike actually does feel better. Um, it makes a difference. So just a note, if you're, uh, any tire you're running, be sure to check your pressure every now and then. Just carry a small pressure gauge, check your pressures, because a few pounds can make all the difference. And also your pressures change as the air temperature changes. So it was warmer when I started. It's a little couple of cold nights, probably did not help keep that air pressure up so anyway just a little helpful hint I'm now back on the trail and uh, we are headed that way so we'll check back in when there's something cool to look at okay between mile markers 52 and 53 on the gap trail you will come up to the Pinkerton tunnel which is right ahead it's, uh, I think it's reported to be 850 feet long. So you can see it's not one of the big scary ones you can see right to the other side. But anyway, we're going across a really high viaduct here across the river and towards the tunnel. And, uh, yeah, <clears throat> sun's out and that feels fantastic because I've been riding in the shadow of the mountain and it's a little bit chilly, but this feels really good. Across the viaduct and we will go through the tunnel and I'm just gonna turn my just gonna turn my headlight on here so people can see me <clears throat> there is a bypass trail if you want to go around the tunnel um, I don't know why you would it's not that long and scary but if you wanted to there is a bypass It's actually not a bad thing in here. Um, those guys did not have one on, but uh, I'm gonna put mine on. Because um, I tell you, when they got close, it was hard to see them. So, let me see if you have a headlight, you should probably turn it on. And this says I'm off course. Oh, because there's no GPS signal into the tunnel. So it doesn't know where I am. Hopefully it'll pick it back up on the other side here. <clears throat> okay, another little bridge on the other side. <clears throat> and 
That's that. Well, I just passed mile marker 49, which is a mile further than I wanted to record, which was mile marker 50, because that was 100 miles on the trail. I'm not going back. No way, no how, but anyway, I have crossed 100 miles, basically 101 miles. And uh, I'm about five miles from the next town. I'm trying to think of Rockport or something like that. And uh, I'll probably get lunch there. And I think from there, it's about 10 miles to Myersdale, give or take a mile. And uh, that's gonna be the end of my ride. So short day today, which is fine. Cause honestly, my body is, is feeling these three days. And I don't want to push too hard. Um, I'm going to enjoy the, the really pretty weather today because supposedly we've got inclement weather moving in tomorrow. Not a lot of fun. I have rain gear, but you know, riding in the rain is never fun. So I'm going to enjoy today and hopefully I'll miss some of the showers tomorrow and just maybe just get some intermittent stuff and that would be awesome. But uh, anyway, we've got, uh, like I said, about five miles to go till the next town and lunch. So we've entered the little town of Rockwood and uh, a couple of bed and breakfast. There's a bike shop here. It says they have snacks. Um, I'm just gonna stop here for a minute and see if they're open. Maybe get a snack um, and also look for, I don't know, Maybe something to uh, something to eat in the area as well. I just just left the uh, town of Rockwood, and I am now uh, back on the trail headed towards Myersdale, which will be my stop for the night. That's about 12 miles from Rockwood, and uh, there was a couple of places to eat in town. If you go across the bridge off the trail um, I didn't really I didn't want to venture over just because it was uh, there's a little bit of traffic and stuff and there were some hills to go up and I was like I got enough of that on my own so I just made some lunch there's a little pavilion a little guest center there uh, bathrooms uh, water refill air pump all that good stuff is there um, over on the left here is the husky Haven Campground. So if you're looking for a place to camp, I believe this is one of the options. I don't know any details on it, but it looks like a nice little campground. And that is uh, basically just off the trail as you're uh, passing through Rock Rockwood. All right, and the next town, like I said, is uh, Myersdale, about 12 miles up the, up the path. So about five miles before Myersdale, there is a, uh, a park and ride spot um, in the town of Garrett on the trail. And it's really nice. They've got a restroom there. There's a uh, one of the tool and air stations. There's a water fountain and a little pav uh, pavilion with like a picnic table and stuff. So um, it's about five miles uh, north of Myersdale. So if you're... Uh, headed in either direction and want a nice place to stop. It was actually a very nice location. There was a lot of people there, so I didn't want to, I didn't want to film in the spot because not everybody wants to be on camera. But anyway, like I said, it's uh, at the five mile mark north of, uh, north of Myersdale. All right, we are coming up on the Salisbury Viaduct, which is just before Myersdale. And it is pretty epic at 1,908 feet long. So it's one of the, the big attractions along here. So we'll ride along there. And basically it just passes over farm country to the left and to the right. And up on the hill, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there is a wind farm up on the hills up there so they're sucking a little wind power and that's probably a good place to do it 
Yeah, Salisbury Viaduct. The best thing is it's nice and flat. <laughs> so there's been a lot of gradual uphill, so it's nice to pedal something flat for a change. Myersdale and right out front off the path is the train station and I'm going to stop here and call the lady who is going to uh, let me into the campground and take my money but I got to stop here first and give her a phone call all right it is morning here uh, day four for me and I am in the Myersdale um, Maple Festival Campground. I'll kind of show you around a little bit. So this is actually a, uh, a festival grounds that they let uh, people on the Gap Trail stay. Um, well, they don't let them. It's $20. But for 20 bucks, you get a bathroom, you get showers, you get Wi-Fi, and you get electricity. So not a bad deal. And a stage if you feel like performing. So anyway, uh, this is where I stayed. Um, you have to come down a couple of steep streets into the town to get here. So you're gonna have to climb those out in the morning. But the other advantage is that there is a, uh, about a block away, there's a sheet station. So you can load up on snacks and sandwiches and drinks and things like that there at the sheets. Pretty good. There's also a subway right across the street from that. And then kind of catty corner from here is a little mom and pop restaurant that does dinner. They do uh, uh, breakfast. And so, yeah, there's lots of little, and there's some pizza places and other stuff in the area. So it's not a bad place to stop if you're, uh, you know, maybe uh, pushing down towards Cumberland and you want to take a break before that big uphill push to the Continental Divide. So anyway, I'm going to hop on my bike and start pedaling uphill. And I'm very much looking forward to a little bit of downhill on the other side. Okay, well, I started this morning with a kind of flat tire and uh, it just needed to be pumped. It wasn't like needing an inner tube put in it or anything. I'm not sure what happened, but anyway, I got it pumped up and it wasn't leaking. Um, but I'll tell you the worst part about staying down in Myersdale is the 10% grade climb coming back up to the trailhead. It is, it's a beast. I actually ended up just getting off and walking up. Um, I know there's lots of people that could ride up that, but 10% pretty steep, especially when your bike is loaded down and, uh, and you know, your legs are not fresh after being on the trail for a few days. So yeah, made for a little bit of a push uphill, but now I'm back on the trail, and even though it's all kind of uphill from here on out until I get to the Continental Divide, it's a much more gradual climb of about maybe 1% or 2%, which in a, in a low gear is super manageable. So I am back on the trail this morning. You flip you around here, get your trail view. There we go. So this is the trail. Coming back out of Myersdale, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, yeah, so Myersdale, great place to stay. Um, lots of bed and breakfast there. Um, if you prefer to camp, I think the uh, the Maple Festival is the only campground around, um, and it's twenty dollars for the night. So still probably cheaper than 
most of the bed and breakfast that you would come across. And uh, to have a shower and bathrooms and electricity and Wi-Fi, 20 bucks is a bargain. So, all right, time to push out of town here. There's another long viaduct coming on. It's about 900 feet, um, about a mile or so out of town. And then uh, the next big stop after that is the Continental Divide. That's about seven miles from here. So keep on chugging. All right, I'm about 1.85 miles out of Myersdale. And this is not the viaduct I was talking about, but this is one of the old trestle bridges. This is the Bulbin Bridge, according to the sign. And it passes just over a road. There's train tracks down to my right for the current railway system. But uh, we should be getting pretty close to that second viaduct. Probably not more than another mile down the road. Mile marker 30. And looks like we are coming up on the, uh, the viaduct here. And I couldn't remember the name of this one. I'll try to put it in, the, in a text at the bottom or something. But uh, anyway, definitely you can tell this was an old railroad <clears throat> trestle. But a really nice, actually paved track across. Like I said, I think this one is touted to be uh, 909 miles long. 900. Did I just say that? 909 feet long. I was going to say 909 miles. No, thank you. But speaking of the 30 mile mark, that means that we are 120 miles in and we've got uh, 30 miles to go to uh, the end of this trail in Cumberland, Maryland, and that's where we will pick up the CNO. I'm going to uh, I'm going to hop on the CNO. I'm not staying in in the uh, finish line town. I'm going to push about maybe maybe seven or eight miles past there to a campsite, and uh, I might get dinner, take it with me. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to go ahead and get. A few miles on the CNO. Okay, well, it's a bunch of people up ahead of me, um, and a little tunnel, which may be the divide. I'm not sure. So let's just ride up there and see if that's what we got coming up here. I wouldn't be disappointed because honestly, it's been uphill for, you know, the last probably 70, 80 miles. And uh, not, not steep uphill, but still that 1% or whatever tends to grind on you. And it is, you can see from the sign, the Eastern Continental Divide, which is awesome. So, of course you gotta pedal up to the Eastern Continental Divide. And then you gotta take pictures and stuff. But of course you gotta do an uphill to get there. Because why wouldn't you? So of course they make you crush just a little bit more uphill just to get here, right? Yeah. <laughs> just to remind you. Yeah, remind you. Alright. And there we go. Divide, and I'm riding a bigger gear heading down and it feels nice to let gravity do some of the work can't lie it's a pretty big drop from here down to uh, 
Cumberland. Good morning. I think uh, we'll be uh, passing through Frostburg along the way. There's a uh, warm, a little bit of a warm, humid breeze this morning. I think we're supposed to get rain sometime today, this afternoon, this evening. I'm hoping it holds off until after I've already popped the tent up. But it is what it is. We'll see what happens down the trail. Got a big savage tongue. This is a long one. I got the headlight on. And away we go. Me too. Whoo, it's cold in there. Oh my. Oh my god, my glasses just fogged up. <laughs> Leaving that really cold tunnel out into this warmer and So uh, one thing when you come out of the tunnel is uh, the tunnel is right back there. You can see the windmills up on top. And you come out of the tunnel and you get this beautiful sweeping vista. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you're not fogged up, but there's a nice rest stop up here and uh, all kinds of cool things. But a great view. You can see all the benches and stuff that uh, people obviously stop up here and take a rest. So right on the other side of the tunnel. So this is the uh, the last big landmark, if you will, on the way down. So this is the Mason-Dixon line right here. So basically, officially crossing over the Mason-Dixon. Um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. They've got these uh, these big blocks right here, and. Uh, Spells out Mason Dixon. And that paved line right there, the line with the pavers, is the actual Mason Dixon line. So everything on the other side over there is north. Everything down here is south. Or at least that's my best understanding. But uh, yep, that's that. Now more fun down here. <clears throat> All right, just. Uh, Cruising along, maintain about 15 miles an hour down this hill, and I'm loving that. Nice, easy pedaling. And this is the Borden Tunnel, established in apparently 1911. Oh, and it's cold in these tunnels, baby. Cold. GPS is very confused and wants me to make a U-turn. That ain't happening. Morning. Okay, so this is uh, coming off this trail back over here. The trail keeps going this way, but this is Frostburg. And there's a really steep 
road over there to go up to town. I wouldn't advise that, but what they did was they made a switchback. So if you look all up this hill, our switchback's going all the way to the top. And uh, that's a uh, pedestrian and bicycle access to get up to the town. So if you were gonna go up into town, I would say take the switchbacks. Probably a little bit easier than going up that monster hill over there. But anyway, it's about 16 miles from here to Cumberland. So I'm just stopping here for a little water and snack and then I'll be pushing it down. Uh, just uh, south of Frostburg, the railroad line runs right next to the trail. So you can see it over here on the right. I am uh, cruising right now, which is really nice. So I'm doing about, I don't know, 18 miles an hour, something like that. Let me check and see. Yep, 18 miles an hour enjoying the downhill and wondering if a train is going to roll up on me here going one way or the other it's not exactly what I would call a big train kind of interesting it's got seats on it so I wonder if they're running tours or something that's kind of cool I don't know maybe from Frostburg down to uh, Cumberland maybe they run a little train tour down there it was just a bunch of seats with uh, seat belts and uh, a little tiny locomotive. So that was kind of crazy. Very different. I'll have to look that up when I get home. Uh, about 10 miles out, it's like we cross over the tracks and we will be riding on this side. I don't know what the significance is, but <laughs> now we've got the train on our left. Our train tracks. I should say. But uh, yeah, we're in single digits now on our way into Cumberland. Uh, let's see what we got here. We got the brush tunnel dated to 1911. Do not enter train when, or enter tunnel when train is coming. I got you. Let's see how cold it is in here. Let me get my headlight on. Turn it on just for giggles. It's lit in here, but it's actually a really nice path inside here. Oh, my GPS doesn't like going through these tunnels. It always loses connection. It says I'm off course. It wants me to make a U-turn. All right, well, this one wasn't quite as chilly as the others. A little break and you know what I'm gonna take a little sit break here and uh, get some water good place for it and we'll continue on I think we're about six miles out all right I get my uh, my wish to see the train passing by there he is was definitely like a tourist train and they were really happy to see somebody biking on the trail next to the train so that was fun all right morning all right another bridge this is just before Frostburg Slow down for this. Morning. They're a little bumpy. This is just going over roads. And a very bumpy little ride. 
That is the Western Maryland Railroad Bridge. Coming out that last uh, railroad bridge, um, we are on a paved trail and we are entering a section called the Narrows. And uh, it looks like they have a uh, concrete canal way running down here to the left. And that, I believe, is Cumberland down there. So we are almost done here. Just a little bit further, I think. Good morning. Oh, and an important little thing here when you come across railroad tracks like this is to go 90 degrees across them so that your wheels don't get stuck, your tires get stuck in the, uh, in the ruts where the rail crosses because it is big enough for a tire and you don't want to get stuck all right let's get down into the town of Cumberland and find that zero marker shall we that comes down and curves back down towards the railroad tracks just when you come to a little Y area there just keep to the left and uh, we have just a little bit left to go here Not too much. So I passed the uh, one mile mark, almost a mile back. So shouldn't be too far off here. This is Market Street above us. Visitor Center, mile marker zero. All right. guessing this way and this way and this way <laughs> just gonna keep going here until I find it I have no idea and I think this way oh and I'm not sure from here let me check my GPS I think it's straight ahead so I'm just going to cross here. Uh, yeah, see and Gap Trail straight ahead. So there's a sign here. I just don't know how to read. <laughs> All right, so we're going to come in. But there are Sino Canal Path signs, which is nice. So we'll just follow the bicycles here. And here is the visitor center. Hooray, hooray. But where is mile zero? I believe it's probably right up here. I do believe I have found mile zero. That's mile zero right there. Yeah. And uh, from the, nice. what is it, uh, Point Park in Pittsburgh to here, 150 miles. Nice. Uh, now only like 150 more to go. Where are you going? DC. 184. 184. Nine. You know, you had to do that to me, didn't you? <laughs> okay, finished up lunch in Cumberland. Got all my photos. Found the zero mark. And now it's time to ride the Sino Canal Trail all the way to DC, 184 miles to go. And uh, I've been told it's kind of like switching from the Autobahn to an old country road. Howdy. So not nearly as great because it's an old historic trail is what they say. But uh, I have to say that the Gap Trail is phenomenally maintained. All those volunteers that work on that thing do such a great job. And uh, if you've ever been thinking of doing one, 
um, it is it is a great choice. I would start in Pittsburgh because even though it it goes kind of uphill, it finishes in Cumberland. You can take the train. Um, there's a lot of tour groups that will rent you bikes, and um, if you don't have one, there's all kinds of options. But uh, yeah, it is a great trail, and I highly recommend it. Um, I don't know if I can give that recommendation to the CNO yet. So I guess we shall see as we get further down the trail. But uh, I might have a change in my plans for today. I was gonna go to, um, I think it's Ebbets Campground, but I was talking to some guys who just finished this section coming from DC and um, there is a section of the trail that goes normally through what's called Paw Paw Tunnel, which is almost a mile long. And there's a problem with Paw Paw Tunnel right now. So the problem with Paw Paw Tunnel is that it's closed to through traffic. You can walk through the tunnel, but when you get to the end, there's a gate and you can't get through it because they're doing construction on the, uh, the path on the other side of the tunnel. And uh, that means that you have to go, pretty much your choice is to go over the bypass trail, which goes over top of the mountain. It's about a mile and a half, but it's a lot of hike a bike. Um, so you can do that, or you can try to find, there's some roads that kind of go around the area. And you know, the over the, over the mountain doesn't bother me, except for the fact that it might be raining. And I don't want to do that part late in the day, so I might push a little further today than I was normally going to, so that I can hit that part of the trail a little earlier in the day tomorrow. So that's the only difference to my itinerary, is that I might push a little further today. A quick look at the uh, Seton Oak Canal Trail, and you can probably see the differences right now. Um, kind of more like a, uh, a single track trail. And when it does split in two, there's like grassy dividers and such. Um, and it's riding next to what used to be the canal here. So you can see this large depression over here on the left. And that uh, that is the canal. But uh, yeah, a lot of it is just this uh, kind of single track. You know, it's not terrible right now. A little more gravelly and such but it's not bad um, hopefully you know if it stays more like this shouldn't be too bad all right so there's two different ways to go here you can actually ride down into one of the canals into one of the locks or you can go over here and ride up along the top um, I've seen people do both um, I don't know what it looks like up top. I think it says to walk your bike if you're up top. So let's go ahead and ride down this first one because I don't know what it, what it looks like up top. I'll just ride down here. Oh, well, that's nice and wide. I could have, I don't know why they say to walk your bike up there. That's super wide. That wouldn't have been a problem. These little wagon wheels are harder to ride in than that would have been. That's pretty nice up there. All right, next time, whew, like I said, this is like, riding in a little rut. Um, next time we will definitely go up top. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's easy to get sideways doing that. But uh, okay, well, at least we know for next time, right? Uh, okay, this is uh, this is Evitts Creek, which is where I was planning on staying that tonight. Um, the river's down there, the swampy, icky, nasty green algae covered uh, canal is over here so i'm not sure how that fares for bugs but it's only two o'clock in the afternoon and see they've also got a restroom up there so um not a bad site but i uh i think i'm gonna push through there's a sign up here that says irons mountain 4.7 that's the next campsite um i think i want to go at least one if not two more campsites ahead um, because it is so early in the day 
and that would have me set up for um, for an easier day tomorrow and because like I said my fear is having to go over top of Paw Paw Tunnel uh, that that's gonna take extra time that I didn't account for so I think in order to just make my life easier I'm gonna push up the trail here um, I'm gonna check my tire pressure is a little low in the back I've been having trouble with that so I'm gonna go over here and check that and then uh, yeah we'll we'll push up and at least get to Irons Mountain and see what uh, distance it is to the next one it is lock 75 I believe and uh, you can see there's actually water coming in at the uh, top of the lock flowing in from that direction down there there is a park over there and there is a restroom you know a chemical toilet way back there um, there is also a lock house over here um, I've heard rumor that you can actually rent some of these lock houses but I don't think that's one of them anyway so the lock flows down this way and goes on down I I think I'm almost to the next campsite, so I'm going to push a little further and see if I can find Further down it. from that other lock is lock 73, and that is where the next campground is. I'm going to go over here and just look at the information, see if it has the listing for the next um, campsite, and see how far that is. That will dictate whether or not I want to ride. Um, I've got 40 we got 41 almost 42 miles in for the day I still feel pretty good though so i'm gonna go check this out look at the sign down here and then see where we're gonna go they do have a water pump here and it's a working water pump so i might fill up my water as well okay pigman's ferry 6.3 miles all right, I uh, stopped back there at that camp. They had a working hand pump. Um, insert video here. All right, so I just filled uh, my bag here, my uh, CNOC bag with water from the well. And uh, the, on the CNO Canal, they have these hand pump wells that are in most of the camping spots. Uh, and there's a little sign that tells you that this well water has been treated with iodine. Um, but you should avoid drinking the water if you have any iodine allergies. Um, iodine may also discolor aluminum pots and cause starchy food to change color. Isn't that fun? Anyway, I, uh, I'm going to put this through. I'm parked down the hill here. And I'm going to put this through my, uh, my Sawyer Squeeze filter. And hopefully that will get rid of some of the iodineness and uh, make it a little bit better to drink. But I don't know if the next campsite or two has a working hand pump. Um, the key to those is that if the, um, the handle is taken off, the well is not functional. So anyway, uh, the next stop is 6.3 miles down. This is Irons Mountain. The next one's Pigman's Ferry. I'm going to make it to at least that one, if not the one after it, to give myself a good head start on tomorrow. And now I'm back on the trail, going to Pigman's something or other. It's about 6.7 miles. Um, that is the good thing about the CNO Canal Trail is that they have camping spots about every five to seven miles. So you're pretty, pretty long on camping spots. spots. Um, now, the reason I got water was I was down to almost empty on one water bottle. I have another full one in the back, but I don't know if the pump at the next place will be working or not. Low again, it may be. I may have to put my inner tube in this back tire if it keeps losing air. That may be something that I have to do tomorrow morning before I head out because I've put air in it three times today and uh, it does not seem to be holding. Okay, we are by lock 72. That's the lock over there. This is the lock house over here and um, it's shaded and i figured this is as good a spot as any for me to grab my pump put a little bit more air in this tire at least to get me to camp tonight um i don't know how sturdy this is i'm gonna walk over here hopefully i don't fall through the floor but uh you can see down here is the river flowing down this direction so that's all river down there and then the canal is over this side 
And when they used to run the canal, they would take water off of the river to fill the canal, but that way they didn't have to run the barges um, up and down the river. They could use them up here with like the uh, wagon teams that will pull them through the lock system. Anyway, speaking of wagon teams and pulling things, I need to pull out my uh, pull out my pump and put some air in this beast. So the winner of the Who Feels Stupid Today award would be me. Um, I had mentioned earlier that I kept having pressure issues on my back tire and it got to the point where I just, I was like, you know, this is not gonna work and I'm gonna need to change it out. And I don't have a bike shop or anything. And I feel stupid because A, there was a bike shop back in Cumberland. I, and I was inside talking to some people that I met on the trail. I should have gone in there and said, hey, I need to, I need to check out this back tire and see where the leak is. I didn't do that. But that's not really why I'm stupid. Because uh, I had a tube and my thought was, you know, I'll stick the tube in there. I didn't want to run with a tube, but I figured I've got it. We'll stick the tube in there, be done. Which was fine, except for one small fact. And that was that I run Presta valves for my rims and the tube I bought was a Schrader valve. If you don't know anything about Schrader valves and Presta, Prestas are the long skinny ones that you see on bikes. Schraders are the ones you have on your tire, uh, on your on your car tires. So they're a little bit fatter and they wouldn't, the stem for this tube wouldn't fit through my rim. So I've just spent the last 25 to 30 minutes with, a, with my multi-tool gorging out the hole that the stem goes through to make it wide enough for the Schrader valve. Now I don't know if it'll actually work with the press stuff. I want to go tubeless again, but anyway, that was a pain in the butt, but I now have a tube in the back. Hope that'll run. And if I go buy another tire place or another tire place, if I go buy another bike shop, I'll certainly buy a, uh, another tube just in case I have another issue. Cause 170 some miles on this stuff, it's probably a deal. So anyway, um, it's 4.3 miles to Potomac Forks. I'm gonna press on. In fact, the water pump at this particular uh, Pigman's Ferry hiker biker campsite is not functional. And I definitely wanna have a water pump where I'm at if, I, if at all possible. So anyway, I'm going to uh, go another 4.3 miles. It's like 4.30 or something like that in the afternoon. It's not that late. Uh, plenty of daylight left. Yeah, 4.40, plenty of daylight. Um, I've pedaled uh, 48 miles today, so um, that'll get me over 50 for the day. Um, but anyway, stupid person of the day or, oh, and a mosquito on my camera. That's awesome. Gotta love the mosquitoes, right? Uh, oh, and the other thing is, it's freaking October and it's like 80 degrees out here. What's up with that? Anyway, all right, uh, enough of my pity party. Time to move on.